It is a celestial body of extremes. Mercury is not only the closest planet to the Sun but also smaller, denser, and older than all the other members of our home system. Bathed in the dazzlingly bright light of the Sun, it was practically impossible to observe this planetary oddity directly from Earth for generations. Furthermore, the extreme solar radiation prevented almost all research visits. It was only when Messenger entered Mercury's orbit in 2011 that the planet could be studied in detail over a longer period of time for the first time. Since then, we have also known that water ice and organic molecules lie dormant at Mercury's North Pole. But that's not all. New findings suggest the exciting conclusion that there is a literal treasure hidden deep inside the planet, an 18 kilometers thick layer of pure diamond. But that's not all either. Another study concludes that hidden glaciers exist beneath the planet's surface where life could even have developed. From an astronomical point of view, Mercury is a galactic loner. The innermost planet in the solar system has actually only received two visits from Earth so far. NASA's Mariner 10 space probe flew past Mercury for the first time in March 1974, followed by two more passages in the same year and 1975. The unmanned spacecraft took more than 4,000 images of the planetary crunch and was able to capture almost 50% of its surface. The second Mercury visitor was also commissioned by NASA. Mercury Surface, Space Environment, Geochemistry, and Ranging, or MESSENGER for short, orbited the celestial body from 2011 to 2015 and ultimately made a crash landing on its surface, albeit a planned one. The third Mercury mission is already on the starting blocks. Developed as part of a collaboration between the ESA and the Japanese space agency JAXA, the Baby Colombo space probe left our blue home planet back on October 20, 2018. The experts hope that Baby Colombo will provide us with a comprehensive description and new insights into the evolutionary history of Mercury. However, it will take until December next year before the probe enters into orbit around the planet. And although Baby Colombo will not touch down on Mercury's surface to study the celestial body at close range, we have now succeeded in revealing the planet's basic characteristics. According to this, Mercury has a modest diameter of just under 4,880 kilometers, which means that it's only 1,400 kilometers larger than our moon in this category. However, when it comes to extreme surface temperature fluctuations, no other planet in the solar system can beat Mercury. While the thermometer climbs to 430 degrees Celsius during Mercury's day, it drops to 170 degrees below zero during the freezing cold nights. However, it's no wonder that Mercury sometimes resembles a planetary furnace. After all, it's just 58 million kilometers away from the Sun. As a result, it's also the fastest planet in the solar system and takes just 88 days to orbit our host star completely. And while researchers in the past still thought that Mercury had a bound rotation, or, in other words, that it always presented one in the same side to the Sun, we are smarter today. In detail, Mercury exhibits a so-called fractionally bound rotation, which means that it rotates exactly three times on its own axis during two solar orbits. Due to its chemical composition, the celestial body is classified as an Earth-like planet, which conversely does not mean that it has the same composition as Earth but merely that we are dealing with a planet with a solid surface. And when it comes to the composition of that solid surface, rough, porous, dark rock is the material of choice, which, with its furrowed craters, is reminiscent of the face of our Earth's moon. And speaking of the moon, Mercury itself has no natural satellite. Due to its special orbit, its special rotation, and its moon-like surface shape, some experts even assume that Mercury itself was once a satellite of Venus. This assumption could also explain why these are the only moonless members of our planetary system. But while Mercury's outward appearance is still reminiscent of the inactive Earth's moon, its interior is obviously much more like that of our geologically very dynamic terrestrial home. And while we are already delving into Mercury's innermost secrets, we must not forget to mention its almost ridiculously large core. The planetary core is said to consist of 65% iron and have a diameter of 4,100 kilometers, that's around 84% of the planet's diameter. The mere core of Mercury would be larger than the Earth's moon. Conveniently, however, 
the gigantic iron nickel core still left some space, namely, room for a literal treasure turning Mercury into a galactic jeweler's dream, the diamond treasure of Mercury. To understand what this is all about, we need to realize that Mercury not only has a disproportionately large core, it also has an extraordinary composition. In detail, the crust and the interior of the planet contain between 1 and 3% carbon in the form of graphite. To put this into perspective, in the case of Earth, the corresponding value is just 100 parts per million. Incidentally, it's also the carbon that gives Mercury's crust its dark color. With an albedo of 0.06, the planet's surface reflects only 6% of the incident sunlight back into space. Inside the celestial body, however, the graphite could have turned into a sparkling treasure and be present there in the form of pure diamond. This was the conclusion reached by the research group led by Yangong Zhang Zhu from the Center of High Pressure Research and Technology in Beijing. As part of their work, the experts investigated the extent to which the high graphite content has affected the development of the planet's interior. And although the two planets are very different from each other today, Mercury, like Earth, was probably covered by an extensive magma ocean in its early days. However, since graphite is generally less dense than the melt of that boiling hot ocean, it eventually accumulated on the surface and contributed to the formation of Mercury's primordial crust. In the same breath, however, the graphite also entered the core and the mantle in the initially still mixed interior of the planet. This is precisely where the researchers started on the trail of the sparkling secret. Specifically, they focused on the question of whether the carbon at the core mantle boundary of the young planet remained as graphite or whether the pressure was high enough to compress it into diamond. The scientists put the highest possible pressure at this boundary at 7 gigapascals. So, in the course of the subsequent high-pressure experiments and modeling, it was necessary to find out how different compositions of mercury's material behaved in this extreme zone. The bottom line was that there was not only enormous pressure here but also temperatures between 1,700 to 2,000 degrees Celsius. In contrast to past studies, however, the researchers added another ingredient to the early mercury recipe, sulfur, which we now know is also found in abundance on the small planet. In combination with the carbon-containing mixture of silicates and an iron-silicon alloy for the core, the experts thus obtained a mixture that lowers the temperature at which the silicate melt of the magma ocean begins to solidify, thanks to the sulfur. And lo and behold, with a sulfur content of around 11%, the temperatures and high pressure at the lower edge of the magma ocean are enough to transform a small portion of the carbon into diamonds. But while this sparkling layer is only between 0.1 and 200 m thick on its own, it could have been significantly strengthened by the core diamonds. As these diamond crystals were lighter than the remaining molten metal, they rose up to the core mantle boundary where they were deposited and formed a diamond layer that could be around 15 to 18 kilometers thick today. However, the natural jewelry box that encloses the treasure is not exactly easy to open. The gigantic gemstone deposit is hidden more than 600 kilometers below the planet's surface and is therefore inaccessible. It is undisputed that the experts' explanations sound extremely exciting despite this inaccessibility. But ultimately, it's just a purely theoretical assumption. So is there a way to find out whether Mercury actually hides a diamond layer inside? Well, the answer is yes, but in a roundabout way. This is because the gemstone layer is actually too thin to be identified from the outside or by indirect measurement methods. However, it could be that some diamonds were brought to the surface by circulation currents, volcanic activity, or large impacts in the early days of Mercury. This is a phenomenon that we are also familiar with from terrestrial diamonds, which are carried along by the rising magma from volcanoes. And of course, according to the experts, the planetary treasure hunt in the so-called High Magnesium Province looks particularly promising. In this area, messengers' investigations have revealed an unusually high magnesium content in the crust and thus provided an indication that material from great depths once reached the surface here. However, the future will have to show whether this also included diamonds, a future that goes by the name of Baby Colombo and, as mentioned, is set to take a close look at Mercury as early as next year. Is there life on Mercury? Well, if Alexis Rodriguez has his way, this can no longer be ruled out. The lead author of the study, 
which was published in the Planetary Science Journal, points out in detail that Mercury and the Earth are surprisingly similar in one respect. But what does that mean? Well, there are most likely glaciers on Mercury too, but they are glaciers that are very different from their terrestrial namesakes. What on Earth are still huge ice masses with a clearly defined catchment area on Mercury are salt streams that have trapped volatile compounds such as water, carbon dioxide, or nitrogen deep below the planet's surface. The discovery of the salt glaciers was in turn triggered by messenger data, which had identified regions with elevated concentrations of volatile elements. In addition, some telltale pits and pockmarked structures indicate that substances once outgassed and sublimated there. In this regard, the experts emphasize that their models strongly confirm that Mercury's glaciers were formed by a salt flow and contain volatiles for more than a billion years after their emplacement. And why this aspect becomes so important to the researchers is clear when we return to Earth. Because even in the most inhospitable terrestrial regions, such as the Chilean Atacama Desert, there are habitable niches that are only made possible by certain salt compounds in the first place. In view of this, it could be that Mercury also has areas underground that are much more hospitable to life than its rough surface. Ultimately, however, the discovery of Mercury's glaciers also has much greater significance. After all, exoplanets similar to Mercury could have comparable mechanisms and make life underground possible. And if you now go underground to our channel Insane of Curiosity, you will find a button there that will enable you to never miss an exciting post from us again. So feel free to press the thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on.